It's now. Guys, this, this is the important bit. With me, it happened straight away, and the thing nearly took my hand off. And I can't stress enough, this thing can break, break bones. Hey guys, and welcome back to another video. With Rensport just releasing another 15,000 keys to access the closed 1.6.0 beta version of the game, I thought it'd be a good opportunity to show you my settings around what I've done because I encountered some problems, some of which can be quite dangerous if you've got a DD wheel, which I have. Um, so I just wanted to go around all the settings which I have input into the game and hopefully they help someone. Let's get over to the game and um, once you get into the main screen, just log in. You can either do that via the app and scan the QR code or input your details. So once you're in the game, go over to my options. The audio stuff, I, I haven't touched. This is all default. I mean, for me as streamer, this, is, this was already set to zero. Video and graphics, this is what I've got I've, because my screen is is capable of going up to 240. I haven't got anywhere near that. I'm, I think I'm running about 120. I did change the uh, NVIDIA DLSS mode. I, I initially had it at balance, but it makes no difference at quality and I'm running everything at Epic. Even when I'm streaming, I'm, I'm getting about 120 FPS. So if you're not streaming, you should be able to get more than that if your monitor and computer are able to handle it. With the rendering, it should look something like this. This is something that I may change. Uh, I, I did go into this and then I clicked some stuff and the game crashed, which I don't want to have happen now. So I'm going to do that in my own time. Gameplay and HUD, I just changed this. If you want to get rid of the steering wheel in the car, I don't like to see it, but you can have steering wheel and the driver visible, but I have that both hidden. Assists, I just left the standard. Telemetry and replay, I haven't touched that at all. So that's that section. Control, so this, this, is, the, this is the important part of the... The settings so to speak so I can't remember what this was at default but put it 10 at 1080 and then put your wheel to the same and then it should automatically whatever car you go into give you the correct steering ratio for that car and if you change this slightly so put that to 10 7 9 and your wheel it won't automatically do the steering ratios that you need so make sure your steering ratios are like for like. All the rest of this, I just left the same. I haven't touched any of this. When you go to calibrate the wheel, you'll hit calibrate. It will then tell you to turn the wheel all the way in one direction. So if that's turning it all the way to the left, get it to lock, then click next, and then turn it all the way in the opposite direction until you hit the soft lock click next and then it will want you to put the wheel at 90 degrees now it's 730 the 90 degrees because it will be 1460 the actual range so remember 730 because it doesn't have 90 degrees and then when you when you hit 730 click the next button and you should be your your wheel should be good to go. Also, <laughs> the the wheel looks <laughs> so. If you run a Fanatec wheel, a Fanatel Fanatec wheel looks like this, but that's upside down. So don't do the same thing that I did, which was look at the wheel and go. But the wheel's upside down. That is the correct way. <laughs> <laughs> the wheel should look. Uh, those of you that have got the Fanatec F1 or V2.5 will understand what I mean. This is the correct way which looks upside down <laughs> to me. The calibrating of the pedals is super simple. It literally is to press your clutch and let go. 
depress your brake and let go and hit next after each one. So that's the super, super simple. Bindings, if you run some other game, I run a set of course of Competizione, there is a section where you can import the bindings from Fanatec, but unfortunately I don't know what button 9 is on my steering wheel or button 22. So I manually input the, the buttons myself, keeping them as close to the ACC as possible so that I don't get confused. Now, guys, this, this is the important bit. Okay, as standard, I can't remember what these numbers are. This is definitely 50. Move this down, 100%. Move this down to about 10, okay? This is going to be no. I think this is going to be, let's say it's 6 or whatever. You're going to see when you open up the game. This is going to be 10. <coughs> and this is going to be 100. And I can't remember if this is moved or not. But 100% move this down to about 10. Also, turn down the force feedback on your steering wheels. Turn it down to low, 10, 15, something like that. Go out on track and turn your steering wheel, like just literally in the pits. All you need to do is get in the car as if you're going to drive, switch on the ignition, move a couple of feet, stop the car, move your steering wheel all the way until it hits the stop stop soft lock <laughs> but guys be careful because the wheel could go crazy at that point okay if it doesn't go and do a lap and if you feel like it's okay then start to move either the force feedback on your steering wheel up or the force feedback in game up okay with me it happens straight away my the force feedback was on 50 and my in and my force feedback on the wheel was at 70 and the thing nearly took my hand off that's the first time it's ever happened to me and i can't stress enough this thing can break break bones easy and that's the first time i experienced it and seen it uh in the flesh i've seen it happen to people on streams just turn this down, please. <laughs> turn it down here, turn it down in your wheel. If you've got lower end wheels, you, you might be a little bit okay, but if you've got higher end wheels, please, please turn the full strength down. The way that I ended up correcting it was in the email that you received from Rensport, it says if your wheel goes crazy, invert the settings, and this is the button that they mean. So again, once you've inverted it, go out, do some laps, um, and once you're confident that the game is not gonna go crazy with your wheel, then you can go up to wherever you want. And I will show you my Fanatec settings in a minute with Fana Labs, and just quickly go through these. Um, so I've got mine now set at 50. I've inverted it. You can see here that this is a filter for the game. Now, on the lower end wheels or, or uh, non-direct drive, it should be between 7 and 10. And for direct drives, it should be 0 or low. I've just switched mine off. This is another important setting, guys. Your wheel torque capability. So if your wheel is capable of 20 newton meters, which mine is, then turn it to where your wheel capability is. Okay? So I had it at 10. And I was getting clipping like you couldn't believe, even though my wheel is capable of double that. And I realized that it was this setting here that needed to be turned up. Okay, so make sure this matches whatever your, your base is capable of. Okay, sensitivity, I just left at 100. You can test it, guys. Move it to 200, see what happens. Move it to a zero, see what happens, and then you'll realize that 100 is where you should leave it. <laughs> um, with the tick rate, make sure it's on 400, not 50. Uh, it's basically the frequency. The higher the frequency, the better your game uh, base is receiving the signals.
So that's it with the settings. Don't go away though, because uh, I will show you my Fana Labs uh, settings. So here I've set the sensitivity to 1080, which is matching in game. I did have in game set to 100 and on the wheel set to 50. And this enabled to me to change the force feedback on the fly. But what you want is you want the most amount of electricity going through your wheel. With more electricity going through the wheel, the magnets are working harder rather than having it down at 50 or 40 and allowing the game to do the rest. So always, always have your force feedback strength higher on the wheel, okay? Force feedback scale, I've got on peak. I've been messing about with the dampener between 25 and 50. Uh, I've moved it down from 50 to 25, so I think anywhere between that is fine. This is, this is something you can play with and it's personal preference. Switch the natural friction off, natural inertia off, force feedback interpretation is on six, and then from uh, force feedback intensity down to the dampener is all at 100. Brake level indicators off because it makes no difference. But guys, I hope this video has been informative. I know a lot of people have got keys at the minute in relation to the game and probably don't understand what they're doing as I didn't. I had to go through a, a good few hours of drive, test, back to the pits, drive, test, back to the pits. And I've got the force feedback somewhere in a range of where it feels comfortable. I can feel the tyres, I can feel the kerbs, it doesn't feel grainy and it's at a good level. I, I'm not saying that it's the best and it and things probably need working as and when through discords etc but it will definitely give you a good base guys if you like the video please give give it a thumbs up maybe subscribe to the channel to see more wrench sport content um and yeah don't forget to hit the bell notification and i will catch you in the next video